Right, the second practical was to do with ASCII and it's to do with you typing in a character it giving you the ASCII code uh, or you t then type in the ASCII code and it gives you the character. Now, there's a bit of validation here. An ASCII code can only be between 0 and 255. So when you're asked to type in your ASCII code, then it'll validate to make sure you're typed in something from 0 to 255. Now, in terms of when it's asking you, for your character, what it's doing there is storing it as a string and it wants to make sure that it's one character length string because that's your characters in the keyboard, it's only one character per key as it were, okay? Obviously you can press shift and get other characters but there's only one character length, okay? So that's why there's a bit of validation here. Also, with the actual ASCII code, what this float is, obviously there, you, you could, in theory, remove this and change it to int, so it's going to start store an integer, okay? And then what will happen is you output it as an integer once you've actually got the correct ASCII code and then the corresponding actual character. What this, the reason why there's a float here is just to make sure if somebody actually does type in a number that's got a decimal point to it, there'll be a bit of validation here just to make sure that if that number is entered with a decimal point, it'll be able to work out if that number is correct with a is indeed got a decimal point. And I'll just quick I'll just show you in this solution. Okay, so we enter the character, hold it's a string, and if it's not at one character long, then obviously ask for it again and then output what the code is what the ASCII code is for that character. Now this one asks you for a number. Now if it's not between 0 or 255, so if it's less than 0 or above 255, obviously you've got a problem. This one, say if you typed in 50.3, what this would do is it would take 50.3 minus, essentially the integer functions apply to it, so that would be down to 50. Now if you went 50.3 minus 50, and if that doesn't equal to 0, you've obviously typed in a a single number or a floating point number, okay? A sense what number with a decimal point. So that's just to a sense what to say, well, hold on a minute, and it makes sure that you're typing in a whole number, okay? So it's just a wee bit of validation. So if I ran this code, if I typed in T, I typed in 114, and that's R, okay? So what we've done there is when I've actually output this because it's stored as a float, it would actually have output it as 114.0. So this is just applying this, just to output it as 114, get rid of the point. And this one is outputting, you're applying this function, but you want to apply it to an integer. So that's why I've wrapped the code, which was the ASCII code you typed in. I've wrapped that around the int function just to make sure it's just a whole number. And that's how you did the second Probably.